years ago, I made a documentary film about an abandoned canal, the Shrewsbury to Newport Canal. When I was filming, I met up with a bunch of volunteers who were trying to put the canal back into water. They'd formed a trust, the Shrewsbury and Newport Canal Trust. There's a lot of water that runs under the bridge in that time. So I've come back after 10 years to see what progress has gone on since then. Originally, the video took about three months to make and we visited many places along the route of the canal. But for now, Today, I've come back to Wappenshaw Junction. Look at this old gate. This is a stop gate. It was used to uh, block off the canal, which is passing that way before you would come into this Wappenshaw Junction, where you find the Thomas Telford building that we're going to look at. I don't remember this gate when my previous visit, and I understand that uh, when they were draining all the muck they discovered it and decided to keep it as a as a something to show off i guess lovely wappenshaw junction presumably named after the village of wappenshaw is the point where the newport canal meets up with the shrewsbury canal <laughs> This amazing Thomas Telford building and the restoration work that's going on here by the Trust is their flagship project. So let's meet up with the chairman, Bernie Jones, and find out what's been going on. Hello, Bernie. Hello, Richard. Long time no see. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, Bernie Jones, the chairman of the Shrewsbury and Newport Canals Trust. Mm -hmm. You've been overseeing this all this time since I, well, since I was last here. Mm -hmm. There's been a lot of changes. I've just walked through and seen them. Are you going to show me around? I certainly am. Come and see what we've done since you were last here. Yeah. But first of all, yes. health and safety. I do need to give you one of these to put on, please. Oh, right. Okay. Fair enough. Yep, of course. Just watch the strap. Here we go. There we go. Okay. Is that all right? After you. All of this, it's nice to see the, the, the board is the same, isn't it's, it? It's actually starting to become reality. Yeah. It's changed a lot, Bernie, since I was here. Quite a bit, isn't it? Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. So, when did you, I know you were sort of, it was a national lottery funded project. It was. And so 10 years ago did you start immediately or when did you get cracking on all of this oh if only we could have done <laughs> it was the case that once we'd got some money to go and get all of the necessary paperwork in place it took right the way around till the 26th of september 2018 wow before we could actually start to do some physical work so there's a lot of bureaucracy then in all the different aspects of it yes. gosh planning permission, listed building consent, and a host of other reports that need to be submitted before we can actually start work. And then I suppose COVID comes along, just as you're in the beginning of throng of it. Just when we were really starting to cook with gas, we had COVID hit us and that slowed us down big time. But it looks like now you're really forging on. We've done a huge amount of work uh, and I can't do more than praise the team that come down here as volunteers giving of their time. Every Friday and Saturday, we really get a lot of work done. We've got some damn good volunteers. And that's the point that is worth getting over. It is all done by volunteers. It surely is, yeah. And, and that is incredible. Mm -hmm. Shall we go and, and have a look round? Please do. Hey, wait a minute, Bernie. There's something missing here. As I remember it, there was a great big green, what would you call it, a Nissan hut or something? A Romney building. Your memory's very good. A Romney you building. You noticed. Yeah. yeah. And, but what, it's gone. Yeah. It, we, is that the scar of it, would you say, the outline? on? Yeah, that's the roof line of the building as it was, so you wow. can see just how big it once was. 
So where is it now then? It's gone to Ironbridge Gorge Museum Trust to become a heritage workshop. Ah, mm. and, and in its place you've got some building work here? We've already started to rebuild the original shaped stable block, which was the automotive power for the whole of the canal system. So of course they would have had horses here. Yep. Pulling, as I remember in the opening scenes of the video, talking about how one man could pull the, the canal boats. Correct. Yeah. Now I've, I've made a bit of a blunder here because I called the whole lot Thomas Telford's building, but I remember now that's not quite right because I think that's the Thomas Telford bit. Is it is. Right? This is the design of Thomas Telford's buildings, which is replicated two or three times up and down the internal network of canals. Of the canals, yeah. yes. And, and so that is um, older, was, is it? This one's built by Bradshaw and it was part of the original canal basin here when it was first built. Right. Yes. Now, as I remember, this wonderful building had a rotten staircase, which w wasn't much of it left. I can't even remember going on it. Maybe we did, didn't, but look at that. Yeah. The original staircase had really rotted away and was unsafe. Yes. So we've completely removed that and rebuilt this beautiful structure in its place. Well, I have to say, Bernie, I know you've got all your gear in here and you're working, but it's a lot cleaner than it was when I was here with all the cobwebs. It was dark, the, the windows were broken, it was very dingy. And this, I understand, is going to be the cafe of the Vista Centre. Correct. This is the cafe just here in this corner. The seating will be down this way. We've built a new extension to the building with a toilet block on the back end. Um, there's a, a cupboard at the bottom of the stairs there, which will house all of our communications um, wiring and controls. Uh, the boiler house is in the corner here with all of the electrics. So we really have done a great deal of work here. Yeah. The whole place will become a visitor centre and the main attractions will be over in the other building yes. when we've renovated that as well. I bet there's times when you're working does you wish the cafe was all up and running? Although there is a gentleman at the back there already having his cup of tea. So. Quite welcome as well after the shift that he's put in today. But yes, you're quite right. I mean, once we get the cafe in here and uh, fitted out, it will be the case that we'll look forward to having a decent cup of coffee at least. So I'm very eager to have a look upstairs because I remember there was an interesting story you told me when we went up there the last time. So let's have a little look up okay. there. It's all changed, Bernie. It hey, certainly wait a minute, has. Hang on a minute, Bernie. As I remember it, as we came up the stairs last time, because I was filming as well, there was a partition here with a door. And the thing I really remember, which was a bit weird, was that there was a family that was living here, or at one time had lived here. It was the case that the Goffs, the family that lived upstairs here in this building, with no heating, only just running water, had two children, they were the uh, last tenants. The last tenants that lived here, and he went over and built the house next door that's now been demolished and a new one put in its place. Wow. He was the coal merchant. Oh, right. Oh, okay. So they weren't gypsies or anything. I don't no. know quite why I got the thought of that. No. Let's go and have a look, see what you've done. Okay. I don't remember the beams being as clean and as beautiful as they look now. Without a doubt, there's been a lot of work that's been put into this by the very man that's behind us at the moment, our Dave Clark. Uh, he's worked terribly hard on these to get all of the tar and pitch and black muck off them, spruce them up and put some very special preservative on the top of them so they're there in all their beauty now. Do you think, here's a question for you, do you think that when, when this is open, people coming to the visitors, you know, families, children, will have any idea of the amount of work that you and the volunteers have put into this over the last few years to get this up to standard? They certainly should because we're going to have a big photograph album, one, that <laughs> right. shows it right from the start when we, we first came here, yeah. um, with all of the ivy all over the buildings and so on. And we also will have a lot of the video clips that will be shown on a 43 inch TV screen downstairs whilst they're having a cup of coffee. Yeah. So they'll be able to see the whole history of what we've actually done to transform this place.
Yeah, because there's so much work and, and you leave something in the landscape for a long, long time and it will decay. And the challenge, I mean, if it wasn't for people like you, these, sort of, these kind of projects would never happen. Absolutely right. I'm afraid that the, the whole of the canal restoration movement is driven by volunteers. And the volunteers that we've got here are just incredible. We've been, worked through some awful weather yes, to I get bet. this far. And we're all looking extremely forward to having the first cup of coffee downstairs when we actually get the cafe <laughs> open. Absolutely. This is a splendid view, isn't it? It's very, that, very picturesque, isn't it? Now that you've got the water in, because this was all full, wasn't it? It was. It was all full of spoil when you last visited, Richard. I absolutely remember that. And, and you're going to have a couple of boats in here. We are. We've got two Woolwich class narrow boats that are a pair. One has a motor and one doesn't. And they've always been pulled around the system together. So, 1936, um, built by Holland and Wharf. Wow. So, How about that? I mean, there's so much work to go. Right? It's, it's hard to sort of ask this question. But when do you think you will open it to the public? Well, the plan is to get the cafe opened first. The other building needs a great deal of work doing both structurally and internally before we can open that as the other half of the visitor centre. But we have got space upstairs, as you've seen, to have a limited uh, part of an exhibition that we're working with our partners down at Ironbridge Gorge Museum Trust. It's really now dependent on getting the rest of the groundworks that you've seen here today completed and the car park cleared. Once we've got the um, stable block finished with a roof on it, we'll be able to take all of our tools and equipment out of the shipping container remove the shipping container, then we can start with a bigger car park. So that should be, I want to just say later this year. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. That means I'll have to come back <laughs> at, the grand, <laughs> at the grand opening. And have a cup of coffee. And have a cup of coffee <laughs> with you and yes. celebrate. It will, be, it will be fantastic. Certainly would. Bernie, it's been an absolute joy to come and have a look round and see everything in this 10 year distance. I obviously mustn't leave it too much longer. <laughs> Very true. Uh, we'll have to come back. It's really good to see you, Richard. And thanks very much for coming all the way up today. It's my pleasure. Well, I have to say, I have thoroughly enjoyed my visit here to Wappenshaw Junction and to see, to see the work that's been going on, the volunteers. I mean, they're all of a certain age, but they're putting in all that energy. And this is so vital, really, because places like this would not exist if it wasn't for people who are keen and enthusiastic for our heritage. So if you've watched this video and you thought, wow, that's really inspiring, I'd love to be a volunteer, then do talk to the team at the Shrewsbury and Newport Canals Trust. You can wear your hard hat and help out and restore one of Britain's fantastic heritage projects. Thanks for watching.